Hi guys, welcome to Watercolor Painting College for Kids 2021. And I'm just going to go ahead and start off by telling you about the book that we are using for this course. It is called Watercolor Painting Step by Step. And the author's names for this book are Marilyn Graham, Barbara Butterick, and Girl Medway. You can find this book in any half price bookstore, and I will include a link in your Google Classroom if you would like to purchase this book. And I think it has been very helpful for me as well. I've learned more technical terms about watercolor painting and uh, we are all learning together. So I'm super excited about this class and we're going to make a lot of really cool stuff with watercolor painting. All right, without further ado, let's jump right into it. Uh, as you can see, I have the palette designed much like the palette in the book that you saw. And the colors typically used for watercolor painting are listed here in the book. So I'm going to pause real quickly and upload the list of colors in the video. So just take a moment, go over those colors. And throughout this video, you will see how I manipulate the water, how much water I'm going to place on the brush, how my hand is holding the brush, and how I stroke the paint along the paper in my watercolor notebook here. You will have loose leaf watercolor papers for this class, but um, I've been doing this for quite some time and I have just found that painting in a notebook is better for me personally. I like seeing all of my artwork already together in one place. So if you have loose leaf watercolor pieces, I would highly recommend you to place them all together in a portfolio. And you can see how your work progresses from beginning to present time. I am constantly learning as an artist and highly encourage you all to do the same and keep record of your, your progress. It's really, really cool to see how much you improve. Practice really, truly does make perfect. So I am currently sitting outside on my balcony and I just decided to paint some trees. The trees that I see before me, I'm just going to go ahead and paint it as I see it. And I think it's a great way to start off painting um, trees um, for beginner painters. Um, any landscape, nature settings is a great way to break that ice and uh, really just alleviate any kind of intimidation you might have with using a new art medium. As you can see, I, uh, I'm going to start off with a braided wash to create the sky. And with graded washes, you're essentially just going to place more color at the very, very beginning of your strokes. And as you go down the gradient, you're going to gradually stretch the color with water. So you'll add lots and lots of color for those first couple of strokes and finish off by stretching the color or spreading out the color with solely water with only water and that's the beauty of watercolor painting it takes a little little pigment and the water does most of the work for you it's all in the technique so i want you to watch closely how i manipulate the water how i hold the brush and how i essentially create the image that i see before me painting should be relaxing it shouldn't be something that is stressful at first, it can be a bit intimidating, but as you keep practicing, keep stroking, you'll get the hang of it, I promise. So I highly encourage you to just start painting whatever you love to paint, whether it be nature, trees, butterflies, dogs, cats, 
flowers. I love painting flowers personally. So think about something you would like, a subject that you would like to paint and start with that. And it's best not to overthink. When you're first starting out, don't be too hard on yourself. Just paint. Don't worry about perfection, right? Perfection's overrated, especially in the art world. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. It is subjective. What's beautiful to one person might not be to someone else, right? So the beauty of art is your creations are all beautiful. They truly are. Be proud of what you create. Be proud of trying something new. And when you finish your first watercolor tree painting, you're going to be so proud of yourself. I am proud of you. Just know that. So as you can see, the trees are coming along. Again, watch the technique I'm using. The leaves are made simply by just taking that color and making several short, quick dabs on the paper. So you're just, you're just tapping the brush along the branches and making little, little spots, if you will. A lot of little spots, and that creates the appearance of several leaves bundled together on those branches. When you use darker colors, it creates depth, and lighter colors create more highlights. So just keep that in mind. When you're painting or creating any kind of piece, to create a more shadow-like appearance, you're going to use darker colors, and highlights will be brighter colors. So if you're looking at trees, during the sunlight, there will be areas of the trees that are more in shadows and areas of the trees that's more directly in sunlight. And the areas that are brighter in green shades will be the ones that potentially are in sunlight. That's very, very important in art pieces, creating highlights and shadows, creating depth. All right, and we'll talk about that later on in the course. But for now, just watch my painting techniques, how I create the branches, starting out with thicker lines and fading into thinner lines. And that's what trees do, right? You start out with a big, big, big trunk at the base of the tree. And as you go up the tree, the branches get smaller and smaller. It's really, really cool. I love painting trees. And decorating on the branches with the leaves is my favorite part. So I'm just painting all of the branches first. And these trees are mixed with vines and interconnected parts. So that's why this isn't your typical tree painting. Um, it's not just a simple trunk and single tree going into several branches and several trunks cluster together. And so that's why this one is a little more free flowing, which I think is great just to kind of have a little freedom in when you paint, right? Again, it should not be stressful. I want you to have fun with it, right? I want you guys to, to have fun. And it's definitely a way for me to de-stress and just to really just enjoy the process of creating. And this is what I'm seeing. This is the scene that I'm seeing in my balcony. So if you want to paint along with me what I'm seeing, that's fine. But I encourage you to go outside, go to your favorite part, and paint the trees that you see. Or you can just sit in your own backyard and paint the trees that you see. And every artist will learn the fundamentals of sighting. This is called sighting. When you look at what you see and paint it, you will also be getting into still lifes. And that's essentially the same concept, just painting what you see. And 
sometimes you could uh, paint what another artist would be painting and the two paintings would come out totally differently because every individual might perceive things differently than the next person. And that's also really, really cool, I think. And it creates individuality, right? You want to be original as an artist. So as you can see, as I'm painting, I'm choosing different shades of brown. Some of the branches almost look black. Again, this creates depth when you use different shades of color. And you're going to want to use less water to create those darker shades like that. That's how it's darker because you're adding less water. All right. And notice how I'm mixing the color on the palette. I'm not mixing within the same without within those outside circles because you want to keep those colors pure in color. You're always going to mix in the open area of the palette so that you don't mix up all the colors. Let's just say if you took red and blue to make purple and you take the red and you place it in the area where the blue is and mix it together. Yeah, you create purple. But that blue paint is no longer there. It's now just purple. And if you needed blue again, you wouldn't have it because you've mixed it all together with the red. So that's why you want to keep a nice, clean palette. Clean in the sense that you're, you're keeping the mixed colors separated from the pure colors. All right, so I've gotten into painting the leaves on those branches, my favorite part. And looking at the technique I'm using, it's fairly simple. You're just going to take your brush and just tap on the paper with that color. I'm adding yellow to create lighter shades of green which really insinuates the points where the sunlight is hitting the trees. And most of the time you're going to want to use that bigger brush, that rounded edge the larger rounder edge brush is best to use for the leaves. Just so that it can spread the color better. And you can just be free with the colors, the shades of green that you would like. I will uh, add black to green as well to create really, really dark green. 
And notice how I'm mixing. So these are the parts where the trees are in shadow. That's why it's going to be a darker shade of green. You can also add white to green to create a lighter shade. But because the sunlight was very, very bright during that time of day, it really just appeared a bright lime green in the points where the sunlight hit the trees. And with watercolor, it's okay to leave white spaces because it insinuates a background, right? There doesn't have to be green on every point on the page. Even the sky, as you can see, there's not blue all the way down the paper. It's just hints of color. And I like that. It leaves room for imagination. So going back to that large rounded edge, just filling up the branches with leaves. Normally when you make the, the leaves in this manner, you notice the brush is vertical with the paper. So just dapping the brush straight up and down on the page. Brush should be vertical with the paper. And you're making little, little spots over and over and over. All right, so I'm just about finished up here. You can always stop a piece and start it up again and you're feeling ready. You can always change an art piece, right? It ends when you choose it to end. It can really go on forever. <laughs> but you can choose when to end your piece when you're most happy with it. And so I'll just go ahead and wrap up here and all of the materials that I'm using in this video, I will leave in the description box below. And always just refer back to this video if you want to look at, at the techniques and how I'm mixing the colors. I've run out of space there, so I just added more color on the edge where I'm not mixing it with the colors. Um, but yeah, always refer back to the resources in your Google Classroom. It's been great painting with you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And I can't wait to see the creations that you make during this class. I look forward to working with you. And I will see you in class. Until next time.